Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to another Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch, thank you for joining me. So I woke up this morning and figured I was going to start noodling around with something that I haven't really done yet, which is DGD tuning and mapping out some chords and uh, some note structures to get a better idea on how to play fully in this tuning. Now I'm sure many of you maybe have dabbled in DGD and uh, have wondered about it, and it's great for playing melody and playing in the key of G without having to worry about capoing or using a one and a half fret or any of those things. So it's a really, really great tuning, but it's even better when you get into it and actually start playing the chords because it's got some of the same ease of use and, um, and movement of chords as DAA tuning does. And in fact, DGD tuning is often called reverse Ionian and I'll show you why in just a second. But first I wanna say hello and thank you very much to Dave Boyd, one of my patrons on Patreon. Dave, thank you very much for signing up, subscribing, and becoming a part of my art and this wonderful love-filled community that I get to wake up to every single morning. I thank you guys so much for making it possible for me to concentrate on learning new things, creating new music, and then sharing it with you without running around crazy out there in what people call meat space. I think I've heard that. I like meat space, but I also like hanging out and trying to figure out new things and puzzle through them. And Patreon gives me the ability to do that without stressing too much. So you guys are responsible not only for Dulce America, but also the brand new Dulce America Deluxe, Mailbag Monday, any piece of music that comes out of the studio, you can honestly say that my patrons underwrite that. So Dave, I want to thank you for joining the community and for being there and supporting what I do on a daily basis. For those of you wondering about Patreon, think of it like a subscription service like Hulu or Netflix. But instead of it being a bunch of movies from studios, it's actually a bunch of art from different artists. And on my Patreon, you can get everything I've ever created. All CDs, all books, tablature, videos, and teaching materials for just $5 a month to download to your heart's content. What's cool is that every single week, I'm producing new content as well. So you're gonna get a lot of things before the general public sees them. New demos of songs, new videos, new projects, and of course, new sheet music for you to try out and test drive. If you wanna do that, exactly, test drive before you buy. Come on down here to this link, that's patreon.com slash bingfutch. Go ahead and go to the open house tag section and there are over five years of downloads for you to explore. And if you like what you see, please do consider becoming a patron like Dave Boyd. Dave, again, thank you very much. So seriously, I woke up this morning and I was thinking about DGD tuning. And I thought, you know, I don't have a chord chart for this. I don't have a note placement chart for this. One of my patrons actually asked me about DGD tuning with a chromatic dulcimer. And I kind of put something together very quickly but to realize I didn't have the resource. So sure enough, I woke up, created the resource, and I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you. But before I do, I wanna show you some comparisons between uh, DAD and DGD, and what is similar and what is different. I'm gonna go ahead and tune the middle string back up from G to A now. I'm gonna get my A, fourth fret bass string. Okay, so I'm in DAD tuning now. So you might have heard that DAD tuning is also called a 158 tuning. And those numbers stand for scale degrees or the numbers of the scale. So let's talk about D major. Uh, the one would be for D and the five would be for A, which is the middle string. And the eight would be the octave above the root which is the one, which is D. So D, A, D is one, five, eight. Those are the first, fifth, and the octave notes of the scale, and that's any scale. So you can tune in D, A, D and have a one, five, eight tuning. You can tune in C, G, C and have a one, five, eight tuning. You can tune in E, B, E, and all of those are basically the first, the fifth, and the root, or sorry, the octave above the root of those scales. And uh, so you could tune your dulcimer in all those different ways and still play all of your tablature that is written for DAD specifically, you'll still have that same configuration. When we're playing an open DAD strum, we are playing what's known as a root five chord. That's a chord that just has two notes, the root note or the one and the fifth note, the fifth. So D, A, and then we have the octave above. The distance between the root note, bass string, 
And the middle string is a fifth. There are five notes between D and A. D, E, F sharp, G, and A. D, E, F sharp, G, and A. So one five and then the octave eight. Then when you go from A, the middle string, to D, you are a distance of a fourth. So we've got a interval of a fifth from D to A, and then A, B, C sharp, D, an interval of a fourth from A to D over here. That configuration is present in DGD tuning as well, only it is flipped, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and take it back down to uh, DGD tuning, and it's really, really simple to get there. Uh, just take the tuning note or use your tuner from the third fret on the bass string there. That'll give you G, tune the middle note to match. All right, so now we're in DGD tuning. Now, when we're in DAD tuning, the D major scale starts from the open on the melody string or the bass string, and then goes up open one, two, three, four, five, six and a half, seven. But when we're tuned in DGD, we have changed a very, very big component. That middle string now is down one step, which means that the relationship, the interval between the bass string and the middle string is now different. We are now going from D to G, and that's an interval of a fourth. So we are keyed a little bit differently here, and because that G is present, that means that now we have got the ability to play uh, in the key of G using the Ionian or the 155 or the uh, DAA, if you want to call it that, uh, scale, which is going to start from the third fret and go to the tenth fret. So listen to how that sounds when I play from the third fret to the tenth fret. This being G, our starting point, and this being G being our end point, which means we're backing it up with a G on the middle string and then a D on the melody string. So if you've played any in Ionian or 155 tuning, you know that that is the same uh, scale pattern that we use there, going from 3 to 10. So some people call DGD tuning reverse Ionian because you can still play your Ionian tab, uh, but you'll be in a different key. Instead of being in the key of D or key of C, you'll be in the key of G if you are tuned to DGD doing this, moving from the third fret to the tenth fret. So it's a real quick way to get into a different key and use a familiar scale if you are familiar with playing in that Ionian or 155 uh, tuning configuration. Having said that, now we are in the key of G, and we've got D, G, D tuning, our scales between 3 and 10. And for many people, that's good enough just to be able to uh, play melody and have that backup drone. But what about playing chords? Well, we've shifted the position of one of our strings, which means all of the chord shapes that we used in D, A, D tuning are going to be a little bit different. Remember, in D, A, D, we've got the L shape, which is, you know, let's say for G major it would be 3, 3, then skip that next fret and go to 5. We have the slant chord, which is tic-tac-toe, three in a row from bass, middle to melody. And then we have the extended slant, which is tic-tac, skip a fret, and toe. So we still have the slant chord. And real quick, let me just go over where the roots are located for those chords. The roots are located for the slant shape on the middle string, the root is on the middle string. For L shape, the root is on the bass string, and for the extended slant, the root is on the melody string. Those root locations are all gonna change in this uh, chord shapes for DGD. Let's start off with the slant shape. And I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put that chart up so you can see, first of all, where all of the notes are located in this key, or in this configuration, in this tuning. Right up the middle string, you can see the bass string's not changed a whit from DAD, neither has the melody string, but the middle string is now tuned to G. So what we have there is a G major scale going from the very bottom to the top. G major has one sharp in it, F sharp. 
So right up there is G, A, B, C, D, E. We have an F at the sixth fret, which is nice if you don't have a one and a half fret and you've been wanting to have F for some reason, now you do have the ability to play F. Then F sharp at the six and a half fret and then G at the octave, and then that continues on into the second octave. So there's some benefit to this tuning by gating some things without having to add an extra fret if you wanna play some different types of arrangements. Now let's take a look at the shapes. That slant shape that we've used in DAD with the roots on the middle string, we still have that slant shape, but now the root is on the bass string. So if you take a look at that example there, we have a G major chord that's being played three, four, five. Three, four, five, the root is on the bass string where G is located. The third of the chord is located on the melody string. So we've got B at the third, that's the third note of the G major scale. And then we've got our D. The D is at the uh, fourth fret now, and it is the fifth of the chord, the fifth note of the G major scale. Of course, normally D is at the third fret, but since we've tuned down to G, D is now located at the fourth fret. So once again, the slant chord with the root on the bass string, here it is. And once again, because of the diatonic nature of the mountain dulcimer, as you slide that shape around, sometimes you'll get major chords, sometimes you'll get minor chords, and sometimes you will get seventh chords. So there is our slant configuration. Let's take a look at the uh, extended slant. And the extended slant is shaped a little bit differently. Instead of tick, tack, skip a fret, toe, it's tick, skip a fret, tack, toe. So in that example that you see there, we're not gonna fret anything on the bass string, come in at the second fret for the middle string, come in on the third fret for the melody string, and in this case, the extended slant, the root is on the melody string, which is the exact same way it is in DAD. For the extended slant, the root is on the melody string. The third is on the middle string, and the fifth is on the bass string. Due to the fingers we're using, it might be a little difficult for some of you to play this particular version of the extended slant, but do remember that we still have uh, a symmetrical tuning, meaning that we can flip those chords over and uh, they will just change the voicing, they will not change the nature of the chord. So if one of these instances is too difficult, try flipping the chord over and seeing if that makes it a little easier to manage. Finally, we get into the one major difference with the chord shape, and that's going to be the L shape. Basically, that L shape is going to be flipped around backwards upside down even, the reverse L. So in the example you see here, we've got the root on the middle string, we've got the fifth right next to it on the melody string, and then we're going down to the fifth fret on the bass string for the third. And there we've got our reverse L. Now one thing I've always liked about DAA tuning or the 155 tuning configuration is that it's really easy to move uh, your 1, 4, and 5 chords around because uh, the way that the chord shapes are lined up, they're very, very small moves and they're very rich sounding chords. Here I think you've got the best of both worlds. You've got the functionality of DAD or 158 tuning, which is being able to invert those chords for different voices. But you've also got them pretty close together. They sound pretty rich and they're very, very easy to move together. Look at some of these combinations from the slant to the extended slant. You're not moving very far and you're getting into these different chords and that's one of the ideal situations when we're moving chords around is trying not to make a large amount of lateral moves but also try and keep those notes close together and get some really beautiful blends. Ooh, there's one that I didn't expect to play. It's 
not very far at all to switch between these chord shapes. Now you'll notice the fingering I'm using for the reverse L, it, it, it's very strange. I'm using my pinky on the bass string, and it's almost like I'm making an okay sign. Uh, index finger on the middle string, thumb on the melody string. I'm used to doing this from playing minor seventh chords in DAD tuning and, uh, and major seventh chords, and so I, I kind of play finger twister in order to get those extra bits of color. But once you're used to it, you can even bar at the fret down here and then put these fingers down if it's too hard to reach across with your pinky. The more you use your pinky, the stronger it gets. So if you get used to cutting it in there, uh, these chord shapes will be a lot easier for you. In fact, this reverse L shape is a lot like the A shape or the triangle shape in 155 tuning, which I also like to bar partially with the pinky. It's not gonna sound right there because I'm not tuned to DAA. Okay, so once again, we've got a new tuning configuration. We've dropped that middle string. We're aware that we've got some options on the middle string that we didn't have before. And we've got uh, one chord shape that has not changed at all, the slant. One that's changed slightly, the extended slant. And one that has completely flipped upside down, which is the reverse L. I think once you know that those are the chord shapes, that when you tune in the DGD, you'll feel a lot more comfortable exploring and seeing what's going on. And of course, remember where your roots are located. The root of the slant chord is on the bass string. The root on the extended slant chord is on the melody string. And the root of the reverse L is on the middle string. So if you know and have memorized the location of all your notes in the DG detuning, then you will be able to very easily find out what the root of that chord is, then listen to it and tell if it's major, minor, or something else, and then be able to play with a lot more freedom. So I hope you have fun playing with this and that we hear a lot more playing in DG detuning, a lot more arrangements. It really is a wonderful, wonderful sounding tuning, not hard to get into, and it's just one more tool in your Mountain Dulcimer toolbox. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next week.